next uh, panel discussion and uh, the moderator of the panel is Manohar Singh. Mr. Manohar Singh, please come on the stage. Everyone, uh, Mr. Manohar Singh, AVP Technology Consulting Power and Utility, ERNST and Young LLP is here with us as the moderator of this panel. Our first panelist is Mr. Rajesh Bansal. Please come on the stage. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Bansal, former CEO of BSES Rajdhani Power Limited. Next, we have Rene Boringer, co founder and CEO of Cuculus GMBH, are the next panelist. Next, we have Mr. Jain Sinha, Senior Principal Consultant, Energy and Utilities, Capgemini. Next, we have R.P. Singh, Senior Vice President, Smart Energy Water. Everyone give it applause for all the panelists. <laughs> Next, we have Vikrant Sangwan, XENIT, the Dakshin Haryana Bijli Vitran Nigam Limited, DHBVN. Next, we have the next panelist is Som Buddha Chaudhary. Please come on the stage, head IT Tata Power Delhi Distribution Limited. It's a lovely welcome to all the panelists here. And let's proceed the panel discussion over to you, Mr. Manohar Singh, sir. So, uh, thanks, Rani. You already set the context for metadata management, what uh, key consideration we should focus. So, I would request uh, Mr. Rajesh to start with a quick uh, presentation and then uh, Mr. Pissi, a short uh, presentation. So, good afternoon. I am Rajesh Bansal. And let me, before I start, let me admit one thing. I am not an expert of MDMS. In fact, I have definition bhi change kar di MBMS ki. But I know it as a user. I was the CEO of a power distribution company, the only A plus rated company in India. And what is my expectation from MDMS, what I understand, that's what is the presentation all about. So basically, our power sector is transforming. Lot of new things are happening. Everybody knows it. The emphasis on the renewable energy electrical vehicles, consumer engagement, and what is happening because of all these things. One is unpredictability, total uncertainty. I am sure you must be knowing that we as a power distribution company is supposed to know how much power our consumer is going to consume, although consumer himself does not know how much is going to consume. But we distribution company are supposed to know it. And we distribution company are supposed to arrange the power which generation does not know how much they are going to generate but we have to arrange that and we have to match them. So there is a total sense of unpredictability and that is the need and that's the face we are facing. More the renewable, more the EV, at least earlier, whether the person will switch on an AC or not, at least we know the effect will be only in that area. Now today, whether he will charge the vehicle or not, we don't know. And where he will charge, again, that's much more level of unpredictability. Now with all this environment of unpredictability, how we will manage the distribution, only through the smartness. And that's why we distribution company has to go for smart metric, has to go for smart grid and other things. Those who think it is only for billing purpose, I have my own fear. And let me tell you, after 2030, you cannot run a distribution company if you don't have the smartness. You will not be able to run it. It's not an option. It is mandatory. So, when we talk about MDMS and objective, so we have data generation, data communication, data processing, new sensors, everything finally goes to the MDMS. This is what I understand MDMS is. Everything goes to the MDMS. Now, my key question is whether the present MDMS, the MDMS we are talking, will enable us to achieve the utility objectives. So the infrastructure you are giving to us, the meter, the network, the communication, the HES, the MDMS, which is the core, whether it will enable us, whether it will empower us to reach the ultimate objective. Now, I have made a triangle of the objective. The bottom one is the maturity level number one. We can say zero or one. What is that? Meter reading. Disconnection, prepayment, outage information. I am sure the MDMS is taking care of this. But let me tell you, after road accident, the second highest death is because of electrical accidents. Safety, 
does the MDMS or the system talk about safety? You are listening since the morning. Anybody said the safety is the ultimate objective? But this will go into become the objective. So is your MDMS knows that this is the final objective I have to effect? I have to cater for the health of the network. I have to cater for the, uh, you know, uh, for the integration of GIS, for fault isolation, for fault restoration. You know, if any cable become faulty, you, the supply is not restored by removing the fault. That way, it will take hours or days. We have some other ways to restore. So, does we know that thing? That these are the objective. So, if we know the objective, then we have to ensure that MDMS should address this objective. That is the most important thing. As a utility person, I would like to say. Now coming to that, key question is, are we able to meet the planned objective? If not, why? Maybe it is not defined. We are just simply talking about the, the basic thing. It's like buying a phone, talking about taking the selfies, not beyond the selfie. But today there are so many apps on the mobile. So we are talking, we have to do this thing. Whether we are able to run AI, ML and other things, do we have the data? Do we have all type of data? So maybe we, in the future, like for both, mobile phone we will have mobile like smartphones we have smart apps i strongly believe for the smart metering we will have smart apps not one or two hundreds of smart apps and these smart apps will run on the mdms and is the mdms capable to run this app so the data will no longer be just typical meter data the data will be a variety of data there will be multiple source of data and that all data will run which will ultimately run the smart app. And the key question is, in future, we are going to have hundreds of new apps. The MDMS has to cater them. The meter data is just one source. Just before that, the company from Probus, they were talking about ITOT. They were talking about sensors. They are going to be the biggest source. Let me tell you, managing the consumer is much easier than managing the network. So we are talking about network meters, network sensors, etc. For me, meter is just like a sensor. So you will have multiple source, even source like secondary data, like internet, weather data, personal, uh, the demography of the consumer you can get from internet, the profile, and other things. So there are multiple source and multiple formats. Do we know that the photograph is also a data? Is our MDMS can, is capable to take care of that? So these are the sources what we need in the time to come. And needless to say, MDMS will play the big role so that these smart apps, which are not known today, which are under the development, which will develop with the time, should be able to run. And this is what my expectation is. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I would request Mr. R.P. Singh to please share your thoughts. Esteemed panel, and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so, there's a lot being discussed about MDM, and uh, thank you, Renee, for discussing in detail about what MDM is going to work. And very rightly said by uh, Mr. Pansal, uh, what is smart grid? Smart grid is not about smart devices. It's all about smart applications, which are surrounded around the smart grid uh, the entire environment. So the objective of my today's discussion would be what are those uh, advanced technologies which are necessary for business transformation of UPTs. Uh, there's, there's tons and tons of data which have come from smart ecosystem what we are planning to implement uh, what are those relevant technologies which will play a crucial role in making it actually smart and uh, addressing to mr bansal's point uh, what are those applications those applications are already there in the market people know about these applications but they are not able to establish the relevance of this application in terms of the let's let's say in terms of the distribution sector they are not able to establish what is the effect of this technologies on the revenue of the distribution companies, on the profitability, and on the timelines. So if you are able to establish that relevance of these applications in terms of the distribution sector, we will be first one to adopt those technologies. So, so if you see the energy landscape is becoming more and more diverse. It is moving from traditional to more renewable. And with the government objective of 2030, we need to have 50% of the generation which will come from the renewable sources. The environment will become more and more complex. Now, so when the environment becomes more complex, then you need to think about how do you address those complexities. And which is what the technologies will address. And, and I'm sure everybody in this room knows about those technologies. Whether those technologies are 
let's say talk about smart grid, AMI, advanced analytics, AI, IoT, blockchain, feed force automation, which was discussed in the morning, customer experience platform, loss reduction, revenue assurance, energy accounting. These are all things which are surround to the entire ecosystem we are discussing about. So what is the relevance of these technologies? I think what we need to do is we need to drill down it in, into more details for the discounts to understand if they implement these technologies, how are they addressing the major challenges? So there are three key challenges which, I'm sorry, three main challenges which any utilities try to address. One is the operational efficiency, the other is the cost reduction, and the third one which is the prime objective which everybody is trying to address is the customer satisfaction. So, so all the technologies will revolve around addressing these three key challenges. And, and technology plays a very critical role while we get the data from the implementation of smart grid implementation, but what are the role of the application around these areas? That's what we, we discussed. So if you talk about the Indian power sector, we all know about it. Government of India wants a robust power sector. The challenge still remains surplus power is there, but the reliability and quality is always an issue. <coughs> Distribution sector has always been a it has been a, a laggard in adopting technology. A lot has been invested on the on the on the transmission and the generation side of it. Now it is where the distribution sector has to invest. While there is a investment going on the smart grid implementation, what is the core, core objective? Core objective is not to implement 250 million smart meters. The core objective is how that we can reduce the ATNC losses, how then we can make the discom more healthy in terms of profitability and how that we can provide, not power for all, which is already there, 24 cross 7 power. I think that is the, that is the main mantra. And how that we can engage and connect with 1.4 billion people. I think this is the most critical part, which we all need to understand while we are deploying the entire ecosystem. How do we connect with the customers? How are we giving them a differential experience? Until and unless you are able to give a differential experience to the customer, the purpose is not solved. So you implement, you have all those data with you, but if the data does not flow to the end customer, how can they participate, let's say, in the, in the energy efficiency program? Government of India is wanting to conserve energy, but until unless you make the customer aware of it, the purpose is not solved. So customer experience and customer engagement, these are two different things. Customer experience is when they connect with the utilities, and customer engagement is what Mr. Devedi was discussing in the morning that you have an outreach program. That's part two, two of it. I think we all need to understand when we talk about customer experience, this is what you connect a customer on a real-time basis with the utility. The interaction with the utility has to be on a real-time basis for the customer and for the utility on a real-time basis with the customer. Utility should be able to share what they want to share with the, with, with the customer. Whatever the information the customer wants, they should be able to have it on the click of a button. Whether it is related to their account, whether it is related to their billing agreement, which is one of the very basic things. The other important things are, let's say we talk about outages. They should have the real-time information on where is the outage happening. If there is an outage happening in their area, they should be able to report that outage. I think that is very important. They should be able to connect with the utility if there is a service issue. They should be able to have the notification on a real-time basis. I think these are the things which are very relevant for any utility to keep the customer informed. Now, these are the very basic things which we are talking about in terms of uh, the services which we have to give to the customer. There is much beyond that. Now, let's say if we talk about the other technologies which are there in the market, which, which are becoming more relevant to the customer with the coming up of uh, multi-licenses regime, which is going to be soon there in the country. <coughs> what are customers looking at? So customers want to know what is their consumption. Not in terms of what is the consumption in terms of kilowatt or what is their annual uh, monthly consumption or what is their consumption on a 15 minutes basis. They want to know the breakdown of their consumption, which is called as an energy desegregation. And it's a real stuff which is there. As of now, if a customer wants, which is happening in India as of now, so maybe more of the utilities are not aware of it. If I if I am able, as a utility, if I am able to give a confirmation, uh, uh, information to a customer on how is the split of his usage of energy, I think it becomes more relevant for a utility and a customer. As a customer, I am aware that my spend on energy on X appliance is more than the other appliance. And when I am 
supposed to cut down on my consumption. And for utility, it's more relevant in terms of when they are doing about demand forecasting, when they are doing about when they are uh, when they have to buy power. Uh, it's a it's an optimal usage of this information. Now, uh, quickly talking about what type of uh, discounts are there in India. Uh, I categorize the discounts in India into two broad categories. And quickly discussing what one is called as a mature category, the second one is called as a less mature, which is a fragile one. Now, the four parameters, critical ones are what is the ATNC loss? So, if it is less than 10 percent, it is a mature utility. If it is more than 10 percent, it is a fragile utility. Now, when I say mature and fragile, it is in terms of the adoption of technology which is there. In terms of their CD would be less than 60 minutes. I'm sure people in this room will understand CD and CD. Their network would be N minus 1 network. In terms of technology adoption, they would have done automation at DT level. They would have smart metering, implementation done, or in the phase of doing the implementation. And most of the private utilities will fall into the mature category. In terms of the other important factor to know is ARR, which is the annual revenue requirements. Now, this is very important if a utility understands what is the breakup of ARR. While everybody understands, now a small thing as part of an ARR, let's say 80% goes into power purchase, 14% of ARR goes into your ONM, ONM and 9% goes into your employee engagement or employee expense. Now, we talk, if you talk about how is that this becomes relevant, if you talk about utility, uh, if you talk about the application which are surrounding the entire ecosystem, let's say if you are able to save on that 14%, 9%, 14%, which is the cost of employee and which is the cost of the other repair and maintenance by using technologies which are surround to the smart environment, which is smart grid technologies. I think that would be a huge saving for utilities. So that's what my first point was, if the utilities are able to understand what is the relevance of adopting those technologies and where that will have utility gain more profitability. So if I'm able to, let's say, if you talk about the third area in which ARR, which is the employee expense. If I am able to implement technologies like, let's say, workforce automation, if I am able to, the smart meter rollout is happening, if I am able to do most of the job of smart meter rollout through a workforce management platform, which is auto scheduling, work order, auto work order, route, auto routing, uh, finding the minimum route, giving them all kind of uh, compliances, which becomes handy for them. Plus, if there is a service call, I can do all the service call on an automatic basis. If there is a complete connected environment, if I'm a customer, I make a complaint on an automatic basis, this complaint is routed through the entire IT system to a field force uh, rep. Imagine the amount of saving it will have for utility. Even a 1% saving in this is huge. While there are discussions going on in the RISCOM that who gets the benefit, this benefit of this 1%, my understanding is, and, and people from utility can give, uh, can can put a uh, can put a check to this and can can share their thoughts on it. Fifty percent goes to utility and fifty percent goes to regulator. Even if fifty percent comes to utility, I think that's a huge solution. So these are some of the things which utilities have to take into consideration. What is the advantage of getting into details where they can save money? So so. There are other advantages or there are other surround applications which are there uh, around the smart uh, smart grid environment. So I discussed about customer experience platform which is one of the critical one. The second is workforce management. The third would be energy desegregation. The next one would be uh, revenue assurance and energy accounting. Since morning we have been discussing about energy accounting and there are applications which are available right now where you can pull out the data from MDM and give all kind of relevant information to the utility to make that information more relevant for utility to save money. So I think these are some of the things, some of the applications which are there in the market. Uh, utilities have to understand what are the relevance of these technologies and when to adopt that. I think if the utilities get into details of saving they will get, they will be the first one to adopt these technologies. So, I, this is this is the key pillar of any any utility, which is the people, process, network, and technologies. And if we marry all those key pillars of utility, we get all this. We can we can we can have this the entire frame of framework or application which are there to benefit the utility. So I think uh, so. With this, I wanted to end my 
presentation. These are my thoughts. Uh, huge amount of data is there. How do we use that data? How do we make that data relevant for utilities and for the end customer? I think that is more relevant for anyone in the industry. Thank you. Thank you, R.P. Singh ji. Uh, you already highlighted how data can be used uh, beyond you know regular use of MDM system and EMA systems. Uh, my question to Rene uh, that you know already multiple headend systems, MDM systems are getting integrated and there are a lot of integration related issues and there are scalability challenges also. How do you see that we should uh, take care into consideration uh, unification related aspects, interoperability related aspects while you know implementing MDM system? Okay. So uh, no, none of the visions uh, we have just heard right now from you as well as from Mr. Banza will be uh, only close to possible with, a multi with multiple MDM or multiple head end systems, impossible. So why that? So you're starting with a certain vision what, you, what, what the system can do right now. And then you may be, and that's again coming back to the tendering process, tendering in different uh, uh, tranches or lots will lead actually to multiple implementation of different maybe meters and different head end combinations and then also different MDM systems. So now you have an integration issue. After you, you want to implement a new service which will definitely come up, which need to come up because otherwise uh, we will not be profitable and not be interesting for the, for the end user, you have then a life cycle management issue, no integration issue. Integration issues are really simple. Because the one-time thing, it's like a snapshot, and you look at the picture, it's done. But in, in an, a life cycle management of such a complex system, it's like you're manipulating a movie while it is running. That's impossible. So if you want to implement something, you need to you have a system which is under control. You, you do it in the MDM, you do it in the head end system. The alternative is you, you, you discuss with all the vendors of the MDMs, with all the vendors of the head-end systems. They need to manage the different versions of their, of their solutions and do the integration uh, jobs. And then you will still get the, the smallest uh, combined solution. Huh? So the, the weakest link in all that different MDMs and head-end systems will actually define what you can deliver. So that's why uh, we uh, think that the MDM should be one, definitely one, and also, if possible, the head-end system should only be one, and it should have the flexibility to integrate whatever comes next, and definitely we don't know what comes next, and uh, that will challenge us a lot. So flexibility is the, the key. Also in terms, uh, it comes down to simple things like licensing. Yeah? If, you, if you have some uh, MDM system, for example, which is just licensed on the current amount of data, and you cannot increase that without changing the, the license cost, then you have a problem because every single small service will always be a business case calculation. It incorporates an increase of the license, it's immediately dead. And what I think is that all this additional service will be, I, I, would, I would call that microservices. So they will get very, very small amount of benefits, commercial benefits maybe for the utility and for the consumer. So they need to be implementable with a, with a, a marginal uh, cost. Finally. Thank you, Rene. Uh, Jain Sinoji, uh, as we already know that a lot of data will be coming to MDMS related to uh, energy consumption, a lot of alarms and events, etc. will be coming. How do you see that the operational efficiency can be enhanced based out of that data and insight and further how cost, operational cost can be further reduced from utility point of view? Right. Uh, so um, uh, MDM is becoming increasingly data driven. So we have uh, data, uh, data and uh, it is not just about the billing determinants, but we are also um, uh, interested in the data for the sake of, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing this uh, energy audit, which is very important. We also also do it to even identify, you know, at what, what point of time there was uh, load peaking so that we can 
take uh, alternate measures for demand side management. So it, has, it is many, uh, there are many facets of uh, meter data management to make it relevant to these days. Now, nowadays, even, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, important uh, regulatory reporting where we have to even uh, uh, monitor the carbon footprint of the energy which is being used because even in a generation uh, we have uh, an energy mix where, where which is a, a lot of renewables and also, also fossil based en energy so at any given point of time based on the energy consumption we should be able to ca calculate the carbon footprint as well so it is it is having a lot of uh, relevance in terms of uh, improving the operational efficiency in terms of of uh, um, uh, managing the load the load management number one secondly how how you are giving alerts to the consumer so that he can resort to demand side management the consumers uh, the smart meters means that we are empowering the consumers we are empowering the consumers to have a say in in their energy consumption and they are able to take the decision so they are in the control so so even uh, when mr rp singh I, I, I was glad that you mentioned about load disaggregation so uh, so that that was very important here where uh, where now there are technologies which are available by which uh, in, even in the mdm you can have the, those uh, artificial intelligence bots so these rpa bots which is robotic process automation it's a kind of software program which will track all your uh, time series analysis of the energy consumption and based on which uh, at any given po point of time if you are it will also inform the consumer it will it will understand when the consumer has switched on the geyser when the consumer has switched on the uh, um, electric oven or for that matter washing machine so so this how it is doing it it is because the artificial intelligence is tracking your energy use behavior we cannot change the behavior, but at least we can educate the customers that look uh, at this point of time, you know, uh, generally uh, th there will definitely be, certain if there is certain surge in the load, you know, in the morning time they're getting ready to office, so they're switching, uh, switching on the geyser to take their bath. So these are some of the things hidden, uh, hidden way by which, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, your meter, da your data communicates with you. And that is very important by which you, you can, uh, even the consumers can take uh, necessary control actions. And all these things will, will um, sort of go into improving the, the um, energy efficiency. It is also going to reduce the load in the network. So in many ways, consumers are, are also, uh, you know, through this MDM system, through the smart meters, they are interacting with the grid. Um, in uh, after like mr bansal uh, talked about uh, 2030 if you are not having control over the data if you are not including a lot of these uh, um, these uh, automation using sensors and iot's you, you, you the distribution companies will be out of business and that is true because the regulations are are, are going to um, to become more challenging uh, by each passing day India is committed for uh, this, uh, uh, that uh, COP27 uh, climate change agreement where it has to uh, become net zero by 20, uh, 2070. And it has to, uh, to go uh, almost 55% uh, um, uh, on renewables by 2030. So that is the kind of challenges and definitely all these things will come from how you manage your e e e energy, how you manage the meter data, uh, data management system more intelligently. So in the coming days, it is the day when you will have more IOTs, more artificial intelligence for real-time energy data also when you become prosumers you will be able to export to the grid so you you will have in um, applications of blockchain so all these things are going to have make an impact thank you thank you sir uh, now to mr rajesh ji uh, as we already know that you know huge data is coming 15 minute interval data is also flowing into system mdm system prepaid day-to-day -day data huge volumes are there uh, this will definitely create some issues also, data security, uh, scalability issues also. How do you see utilities take on it? How, how should we address all those issues? See, uh, there are some interesting, you know, concept about or uh, perception about the data, which sometimes I feel, you know, need to be reviewed. Lot of people believe more the data, more the delight, but I feel more the data, more the plight. Some say that give lot of information to the consumer. I give you one example, all of us get Geo bill, Airtel bill. Do you see page number three to 10, where each and every call details are there? Any one of us see it? So just giving the information does not make much of the sense. One has to be very careful what information. But the precise example is, a map and a Google map. 
Google will tap you from here to here, take this route, this much minutes, this will be blockage, this will be this thing. And that's why the driver use it. But the map has all sort of information, nobody use it. That's not different, that's what I say the app. Just by giving the data, pushing the reports, the user will application will use. On the other side, let me tell you, if we have so much data exchange which are not needed, which are not given, it will impact a lot on the other side also. For example, the consumption of the, you know, the network consumption, the meter consumption and other things. So one has to be very careful, you know, that uh, this attitude that we have more data and this thing, this will become, I personally believe, we have to be precise data rather than the more data. If you see the beautiful apps, the most popular apps, say we have an app called, app to place the order for food, say Swaggy app, Jumat app, how many screens? Three screens. You have to book a Uber. How many screens? Three screens. You have to see the Google map. How many screens? Three screens. So there is no need to have huge data, huge reports and other things. If you are know what exactly is the application, just work on that. And where the optimization, as our friend has said, which has very, very relevance, and the time has come, we should stop saying meter data management. We should say master data management. You have meter is just one source. We have so many sources of data and all has to be integrated and it has to be converted into the lesser amount and that's where the efficiency is there, not the larger volume. And this is my fear and uh, I always believe uh, we should give the relevant. It's like if I start sending every minute to your mobile, what is your home current and what is your home voltage, how many of you will see it? Is it a plight or delight? So that's what I have a fear. Uh, Sometime in the zeal to have this thing, like the government has changed from 15 minutes to five minutes, I was surprised, every day energy audit. Now, what you will do with the energy, every day energy audit? Let's hope that next day we will not have every hour energy audit. You know, this has no meaning. So one has to be, you know, that's what I said, the objective oriented. We say, we have a lot of application, but what, what application? Are you clear about the, what exactly the domain wants? So this is very important. Thank you, thank you, sir. Now, moving to uh, Samudha ji, uh, in, in current utilities context, uh, we, we already have MDMS data. Now, we see that lot of analytics can run on top of MDMS data. What key challenges of utilities current business, these data and AML or analytics related solutions can help us solve? Yep. Thank you and uh, thanks everybody for the great insights. You have done half of my job so answering this will be easier i just have one slide i would like to just put up to put the context uh, so if this can be if that can be uh, put up please so uh, by the time the slide is put up so uh, the important uh, words that are key words that have been said are uh, information so just to give a context we have around three lakh smart meters uh, running every day there is an inflow of 10 crore uh, line items of data so which is uh, you know it's like riding a tiger so if you are not pinching so we have talked about cost uh, let's talk about value the value is not only in the uh, conventional use that would be reading disconnection and stuff like that uh, it is if not a multiverse a universe of course. So, uh, as uh, it has been uh, discussed, so Anabil, can you please get the slide up? Yeah. So, uh, different aspects have been discussed. So, I'll just touch upon a few aspects that how smart meter data has already helped us and what roadmap we have in that. Uh, biggest challenge hitherto was uh, visibility of your network on a real time or a very minimum delay basis. So, uh, Till 11 kV, the visibility was good. You did not know what uh, your consumer behavior is. So if you have to change the behavior, you have to change, you have to understand the behavior as well. So the information that is, uh, that is coming, how you are going to use it. So now from MDM, that has a challenge as well. Whenever the use cases come in, we take it on a, you know, a la carte basis and start doing it. It's not a very efficient way of doing it, neither you have a journey experience. It is a milestone to milestone experience. So can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Please click on. Yeah, another one click. 
So I'll just give you examples. These are uh, live dashboards that we are working on. Uh, one example is we have been trying to match, the, you know, manage the peak load through ADR, right? Where the victim or the constituents, you might say, are uh, the industrial loads. You have to dis you know, differ differentiate it into uh, critical and non-critical put up things. So that is a, uh, you can say, an AD ADR thing. Why can't you reach, uh, why or why couldn't you reach to all the uh, customer base, highest customer base, that is your domestic, where you can say it is non-critical and you can manage it. So until and unless, so till now you did not have their behavior and you would not know whether they have actually participated in it or not. So with a good digital outreach and, uh, you know, a reward program commensurate to, and we have been able to manage around 80 megawatt. Another very interesting, beautiful thing is uh, energy accounting. For energy accounting, important part is that your network hierarchy is correct, right? Till now, the way was you could do it manually. Now, if you use the smart meter st outage stamp of a consumer and its higher end equipment, you can actually find out whether that is correct or not. So, as you are saying that I can give an information that, uh, you know, whether it's right or not. Why, where it is wrong and if you use GIS you can actually find out which is the nearest matching uh, transformer with which the consumer is matching. So there are a lot of things, asset management is, is something we always are thinking about because it's uh, consumer meter always think, talks about consumer. The transformer loading, uh, the voltage regulation, the power quality, in fact I believe uh, after smart meter installation, no consumer should call us for any complaint whatsoever. Whether it's a voltage complaint, outage complaint, you can, we are using the last gasp to map the outages, then predict the higher equipment. So, I think for the sake of time, let's not uh, go deep into it. But my point is where MDMS comes in this, that it has done, it, done its first purpose. Now that there are so many ecosystems around it, why cannot MDM platformize itself and as you are saying, you know, by the help of microservices, whatever the industries have done using the different MDMs. Because if you see the RFPs, it always has a smart meter and installation part and the analytics part. It doesn't need to be different. It can be, you know, summarized and platformized into one. At least now it can be done. So that's thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you already highlighted that, you know, uh, different applications uh, can use this data and we can generate more insights around it. Uh, RP Singh ji, how do you see customer centricity because now consumers are becoming consumers. Yeah. How, what additional value, you know, analytics can add or MDMS data we, we can use and analytics can help in those areas as well, customer centricity primarily. Absolutely. So, so I agree to the point that until less, see there is a huge amount of data until less you make this data exciting for the customer, they will not use it. Every day you pump them with thousands of bytes of data, they will not use it. How you make it more relevant for them? If you are able to design a platform which is a very user friendly, with minimum of navigation, if they are able to get across to the things what they want to see, and if that data becomes more relevant, it is more exciting for them, they will start using the data. So for example, let's say, if I talk about, I was talking about energy disaggregation. Energy disaggregation is one part which is becoming very relevant for the end user customers. So, so it's, it's, it's actually a saving for them. You are able to tell them what appliance level details, what appliance level consumption they are having, and how that they can save on their monthly bill. I think it will be exciting for them. Second is let, let's talk about something like demand response. Now there are different kind of demand response programs which are there, one could be behavioral, as of now in India, we will have a behavioral demand response. Uh, while we may move to an automatic demand response program, which is yet to come, but as of now, let's say, talk about behavioral demand response. And if the consumers are participating in that demand response program, and if the utility designs a reward program for them, reward programs in terms of what is the advantage they get on a monthly bill, what kind of a saving, or what, let's say, an X percentage of reduction in the bill if they participate in demand response program. It becomes exciting for them. Now third part, let's say we talk about, uh, uh, I was saying the, the utility environment is becoming more and more diverse, which will be a mix of traditional discoms, power, and with renewables coming into it. 
So consumers will become presumers now. Now what is exciting for them? How is that they can trade that energy which they have produced? Now peer-to-peer -peer trading will become more relevant in this market. And it is also, it's like it is not so far away. There are things which are happening in the country as of now. Where we are talking about peer-to-peer -peer trading, where the transactions will happen not only with the customers and utility, it will happen between the customers itself. So are there applications which are available in the market which can make this thing very convenient for a customer? The answer to this is yes. How easy you can make it for the customers to interact with the utilities, I think that will play a very crucial role. So, so that's what when I said at the beginning, if you are able to give a differential customer experience environment, then the customer is excited to get connected with the utilities. And, they, and, and like Som was saying, uh, we would want to have minimal number of cost coming to the utilities. It has to be a self-service environment. Customer should neither be calling utilities or utility should not be following up with the customer. It has to be on a real-time basis. It has to be a self-service environment. I think that is what environment we look forward to. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving to Vikrant, uh, as you are already in, in the phase of uh, tendering for AMISP, and uh, there are a lot of you know, uh, expectations from utility side from business point of view while integrating to their billing system, OMS system, et cetera. And there are certain specifications already defined in the uh, standard rating document. Uh, what is your take uh, that what uh, key uh, integration aspect should be you know, uh, further uh, need detailing or how should we uh, consider the standard rating document versus the tendering challenges which you foresee that there will be? See. Uh, if we just talk about the uh, SVD which uh, Ministry of Power has issued, it's, uh, uh, it's just a uh, one size fit all solution kind of they have just made it out. And it is not going to uh, benefit all the utilities or majorly all the areas. AMI is going to set a, just a base platform where the transformation of the utilities will start. The actual benefit of AMI will, uh, as Mr. Singh said, it will come from, you know, how you are able to uh, correlate with the consumer, how you are able to engage the consumer in the demand side response. And that is going to be the actual benefit. Means AMI is just getting the data out of it, means uh, just as uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Samudha said, you are just accumulating data, and what to do with that? Correct. There is no as such uh, plan for utilizing of this data. Yeah, definitely detailing yeah. of you. And uh, uh, the case, you said that uh, uh, let's uh, start from uh, now. We are taking 15 minutes interval read. Yes. Now let's start taking five minutes interval read. Well, what to do with that? It just keep on getting the data and put it in the storage. Until unless we are able to build use cases, it's just of no use. Uh, nobody will check it out. Even if you send me five notifications, uh, uh, it's a general consumer behavior. Any app which is sending you more than five, six notifications, it, you stop using that. So that's, just, that's going to happen to utilities apps also. When they're just going to start pushing notifications of daily, ji, aapka is ghante mein itni consumption hogi, is ghante mein itni consumption hogi. Well, what to do with that here? Correct. We have to build use cases. We have to th think of the use cases. Otherwise, it's AMI is just going to be uh, investment, and then, OK, theek hai, ho gaya, but now what to do? Correct, sir. So that way, uh, that is where we have to think of. We are putting in a lot of investment. It's costing utility 10,000 rupees uh, for a node for the next eight years. And it's a huge investment. He, investment is running into lakhs of crores and 250 small smart meters, 250, uh, sorry, 250 million smart meters. Yeah. The amount which we are putting into this uh, solution, or which we are putting into this platform across India, it's, of, it's going to have no use until we build use cases. We engage consumers. We just like uh, 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 we in consumer is not a just consumer, it is a producer as well. We have to tell him <coughs> this is the optimum time to utilize the electricity and this is the optimum time to trade the electricity. 
So it's, it's a win-win situation for all, for the utility, for the consumer, and with utility to the government. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, a valid thought that further detailing related to how, how we should use these data going forward to generate real business insights and how business can be, you know, using this data to actually reduce their operational cost or other future aspects like uh, load, peak load management, etc. Those, 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 just like uh, many said that uh, field workforce automation, yes. outage management system. Yes, sir. What is outage management? You are just telling the consumer that your, uh, your business has gone or you will get the electricity in the next two, uh, two hours. That's what outage management system is. So what do you want to do with that? Thank you. you have to think a next step. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, sir. What smart meter comes in, and it's a very non-conventional use. Uh, you are right, and I'll give you a number. Around 26% of the outages that are attended, uh, you will find that the problem was post the commencement of supply, which is not in your control. So before you send your, uh, you know, uh, line man, if you give them the facility to ping the meter and see whether it's live or not, you are saving on a big chunk of uh, operational cost. So that's how you look at, and that information was there for a different purpose as well. It, it was just a redundant information. How you use it is, is really, so you are only bound by your imagination, not by the technology. Yeah, correct. How, how we can actually use all these alerts, events we are getting from smart meters related to outages, etc. And then correlating it to network maintenance planning schedules or maybe network outages overall. Those will really, you know, help us building a better overall AMI system going forward. Yeah, uh, this I would like to add one thing. Uh, we will talk about MDM or we can talk about AMI. It is just uh, one, both of the same things. Integration of MDM with GIS and network analysis. That's going to be a real game changer. Absolutely, sir. You, these three applications have to be coordinated, integrated, and functional. Yes, also this uh, time sync related challenges needs to be sorted out between all these applications yeah. to seamlessly, you know, uh, get all these insights from the data. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, all, all the esteemed uh, panelists, for your insight, insights around metadata related issues, challenges, and opportunities which we see going forward. And over to uh, the IRA team.